for this candle all we're gonna need is crayons. We're gonna grab the lighter and melt the foam part of the crayon. And look at this, it's already light up. Just get the paper on fire and set it into the plate. Just like that. Be careful, don't get burnt. And we got homemade lighter, very simple. And if you have a bunch of crayons, it will last you for like weeks. We're gonna do put the glove on and grab it by the metal part right here. So just be careful kids, do not try this at home. See, I finally broke this glass. Do not. If you try this, be very, very careful. You see, I finally broke this glass. Now I'm gonna take the pieces out. Just be careful, don't break the whole glass bulb. As you can see, this part right here is broken as well. So, but it's still hanging on a wire. So I'm gonna just grab scissors and cut, cut this wire. You see, now it just dangles in there. Now we need to take it out. And you see, we just took it out and it just empty light bulb like that. I found at my house a pen holder. You see, pretty beautiful. And I'm gonna throw the pen away and Put my light bulb over here. If you don't have a pen holder, you can put any kind of isolating tape and it will work as well. Some kind of, you know, something to put on. Put oil in our lamp and then we're gonna dip our cut on rope, any kind of cut on rope, inside of the lamp. Make sure it's all soaked up. See what I'm saying? Soaked up very, very well. Then you see this thing is just too big of a hole. So I'm gonna be using this shiba. I don't know how you call it in English. Let me know in comments below. And you see it's perfect. So we're just gonna put it to the our rope, which is gonna be our rig. You see how tight it is? Okay, we put it to fix this thing up. Probably wanna wear gloves and put it inside of a lamp. Then we're gonna light up this candle. And you see how awesome it is. For this experiment we're going to need two empty cans, marker, knife or a scissors and some kind of platform where we're gonna mark it what to cut. So we place a marker like that and mark it like here on a can, a line. This is tells us where to cut. On this can and on the other can. Now we're gonna cut it on the line. So we end up be being with two bottoms of the can. Then we're going to grab steel wolf and put it in a can like that. And grab it and put it can inside of a can. You can grab a knife and kind of help it. Just like that and push it in. So this is gonna look just like that. So then we're going to need punch holes with a knife or whatever you have. And now we're gonna make like five holes in the middle. One here. Just like that. Five holes here and some holes over here. Then you wanna put some kind of fill in there. A rubbing alcohol will work or antifreeze heel will work as well. Not too much, you don't want to overflow it. Then we're gonna grab the lighter and light it up. Now you need to put some kind of coin on those five holes in the middle. And the fire is gonna be like stabilized. We're gonna put chlorine in a small bottle cup. And then we're gonna grab brake fluid and put it on top. Kids do not try this at home. You can see. Let's get, let's get a closer look. See it's starting to smoke. Yes. 
Guess what? It got on fire. Well, Alright, I cut the bottle in half. Then I need to cut on this side. Uh, it's gonna look like that. Then I wanna cut it this way to get the holes for alcohol. Then I'm gonna grab a sharpie and match it up with this can. Alright, finally we cut this part off. Okay, now we have two parts like that. We're gonna put it inside here, grab a piece of plywood, put it on top of it kind of firmly so it's like same level and just hammer it down you see it's going in and all the way in looks good it's all the way in and now we're gonna make a holes over here around here so we can even cut this one down even lower and now we're gonna need to make holes you see how it's popped up a little bit just a little bit lower where it's popped up I will make a bunch of holes with this pin uh, small holes you see how I'm making holes all the way around then we're gonna put a rubbing alcohol in there you see not too much and light it up we're gonna give it a minute to get it going and after the alcohol boils it's gonna start to burn from here so then we're just gonna put the top on the so then we're gonna put the top on the stove and it's gonna boil the water. I'm gonna show you how to make camping shower bucket, a water hose switch, you know, couple of connector pipes. That's another connector pipe with a mask with the tape to water seal it, and they got the old hose, cut it. The end from here and the end from here and connect it together with a small pipe and this ties they tied it up so they got a short uh, hose. And for the shower head they use water sprinklers and three rubber rings to keep all that together and tight and water seal. So let's put it all together. So next thing they did is put this tape so it's waterproof and they screw it this way and once it's screwed, I'm gonna put the serene on so it will be tighter and more waterproof and screw this one on so it does not fall out and stays there tight. So let's do that. So this is how it looks like inside. And that should be waterproof. Then we're gonna put two rubber rings over here to keep it even more waterproof and then screw it on so we can turn off and turn on the water so they put the tape so it's waterproof and then they screw this uh, host on and they connect the sprinkler head to the end of the hose and that's all they did I don't know why they use this part over here because I'm pretty sure this is very sealed up and not gonna leak but this is for safety if you wanna make sure 100% it does not leak you can put this one as well but this is gonna be fine and today I'm gonna show you how to make homemade ice pack let's get to it things we're gonna need rubbing alcohol I got 91% 9 ounce dish soap and ziplock bag let's get to it first thing we're gonna do is pour soap in a ziplock and then we're gonna pour one four cup of rubbing alcohol I don't have a measurement cup but I think that's about right then we're gonna make sure that we shut it tight and mix it up then you wanna make sure that you take out as much air as you can and then shut it down you can double bag it for extra protection but then we're gonna just put it in the freezer for a couple hours till it freeze down all right this has actually been a day in the freezer what do you guys think this is actually you see it doesn't freeze up so you can apply it over your hand and it's actually you know if ice it's like not as comfortable but this is like comfortable ice pack you know pieces of ice doesn't get in into your skin so if you like need it on elbow wrap it up and nice uh, my refrigerator not cold enough if you 
have a like a legit phaser it's actually will be like a slush this hotel just have sake a refrigerator all right here's what we're gonna do we're gonna grab our knife put it over here on the corner and just stop it on top of a knife on the handle stick it in and, the, and then grab the can by the bottom and hold it tightly and just with one movement go ahead like that then regroup with one movement go ahead like that regroup with one movement and we got it open today I'm gonna show you how to make a cooler out of like garbage we got a plastic Gatorade bottle and aluminum bottle Mila, you know, you can get it anywhere almost. And then we're gonna need a isolation form. $3 at the Home Depot on a register. This is where I got that one. Very simple stuff. Let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do is cut off the neck of the Gatorade bottle. And then we're gonna cut the bottle this way. And then we're gonna cut it from two sides right here. So we can stick this bottle inside. Alright, then stick the bottle inside, just like that. Then we're going to grab a small piece of tape, squeeze the bottle where we cut them, and kind of tape it for now with a little bit of tape, right here. And same thing on the other side. And now we're going to grab our isolation foam, stick it into the slot where we cut it, like this, and just fill it up with foam. Make sure it's all all the way. Ooh. Okay, the rest of it you can just wipe it off or if it dries off, you can cut it off later. But I would wipe it off right away. Alright guys, don't make the same mistake I did. Use gloves because this stuff is very sticky and it's just uncomfortable to have all the sticky stuff on your hands. And I hate that these gloves are small for my hands, you know, you see they busted. But anyways, next we're gonna wrap it up with the duct tape. So it looks a lot better, but this is like first time me doing the, this kind of thing. So it is a little bit of fail. I'm sure you guys could, could make it better looking one for sure. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Here we got a hobo thermos. That's pretty simple to do and if you need to like in a zombie survival apocalypse, you need to make a thermos and you wanna, you know, keep your tea hot in the winter time, you know, you can just grab aluminum bottle, a plastic bottle and some isolation foam and make a thermos. It's pretty cool projects. I was doing it for the first time so it kind of came out pretty ugly. Not too bad, but here we have, have aluminum bottle, so you can put very hot stuff in there. Foam will be completely fine, and it's gonna keep the heat for a long, long time.